Hello, everyone, and welcome to KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast. Um, KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast offers a captivating series of interviews with visual artists, providing a platform for these talented individuals to share their unique perspectives, creative processes, and artistic journey. Through engaging and insightful conversation, the podcast delves into the motivations, inspirations, and challenges that shape the work of each featured artist, offering listeners a deeper understanding of their craft. So, I had a long introduction I was going to do. Uh, not a long introduction, but I'm trying to get um, into the podcast as quick as possible. So today, uh, but one thing I want to share with you, however, is this. you know, make sure um, before you get off, you uh, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, make sure you hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted for upcoming uh, content as well. And uh, if you'd like to contribute to our podcast at the end, we'll I'll give you the links for you to uh, donate to our podcast and bring you these artists in uh, gallery, museum, uh, tours, um, as well as art history documents. Okay. Today's guest is Megan Kelly. Uh, Megan originates from rural Salem County, New Jersey, and currently resides in Trenton, New Jersey. Megan values nonverbal ways of knowing her uh, of knowing her in DFA in visual arts is from Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University, MA from Cadwater University in counseling with art therapy specialist, and I think this is five RTA in dance slash movement from Gabriel's Roth Five Rhythms Global. She is a licensed professional counselor, counselor and licensed professional art therapist in the state of New Jersey, nationally board certified art therapist and globally accredited dance slash movement facilitator. Megan's methods come from decades of training, self-study, and unraveling. She offers deep respect for the discovery process of each individual and a dynamic approach to the journey uh, to journey through the root of experience. She specializes in process-oriented practices that center creativity and reflective insight. Her path journeys the way of the womb to harness raw physicality and fluid attunement. The focus of our work is to support the ongoing ability to be life with awareness, willingness, and compassion. The outcome is personal growth, capacity to be present, and connected to one's inner and outer worlds. Psychiatric facilities, natural disasters, violence, agency, safe house shelters, HIV, AIDS, nursing care, outpatient mental health services, and community wellness programs are settings Megan joined as an art therapy provider. Megan's current projects include being owner slash director of life form practices, a new space developing art and dance as community care in the greater Trenton area, and centering art as a human behavior in her own life relationship. Past, pre- past presentations of Megan's work were at uh, DWBOFFAA, the Midwives Collective, Luck Space, Mayshers Space, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, UB Space in Philly, and, and in Trenton, Montreal, and New York. Megan naturally brings an attitude of gladness to her work, enjoys versatility, and working with all ages, levels of experience, and walks of life. Her approach utilizes artists and residents in open studio formats body of work with a great active imagination, be it drawing, painting, sculpture, soundscape, video, dance, puppetry, and writing. Megan welcomes collaboration and contact. She can be reached at Megan at lifeformpractices.com. Woo! A little out of breath right now. <laughs> but, and it's so funny because I have to put these glasses on and it's like, like these glasses on these crazy. They're actually like the little dollar store glasses. I, I ruined a nice pair of glasses. I got lens crafters that I'll never get them. I'm not used to wearing them. I think I was at 56 years old when I had to start wearing glasses like years ago. And um, I'm not used to it. I'm still not. So 
And it's only breathing glass. That's all I need. So without any further ado, we have Megan here. And I've got over my having to wear glasses saga here. How you doing? Welcome. Good. Good morning. <laughs> it's, it's so really nice to have you here. Um, so looking forward to um, our uh, interview here. Um, we to, to break the ice with everyone coming on, uh, we try to start with um, an artist, you know, an artist state um, that each one of the artists live by. So I'm going to put your first statement up here and you can elaborate that on, on that. A little. Mm hmm. Life is sacred. Life is art. Life is sacred art. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By that. Yeah, I mean, this one, when I heard and came to it, and also the body of work of Gabrielle Roth, um, it translates so simply and clearly, you know, my reason for, for making, my reason for creating, just honoring life, art as a way of knowing and always becoming embarking discovering and really honoring that process journey mm -hmm. all right and then we also had another state we had here the art of life is the most distinguished and rarest of all the art mm -hmm. yeah again i mean similar but coming from like a little bit of a different direction here of <clears throat> I think in our culture, there's a lot of uh, like outer focus, you know, making, producing, generating, j -j 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 that production, productivity. Um, and this is kind of like a, a callback to say all of that juice, mm, pouring it into life. And the art making process can really provide some, some clues into where that 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 juice that motivation that sensibility is moving to bring it back and bring it into the daily now any for any of you we're going to get more into the uh interview but i want to put up some of uh megan's contact social media information so we have here this is her website it's www.lifeformpractices.com and on Instagram at Five Rhythms with Megan Kelly. And I think that's uh, at Life Form Practices. And I'm gonna put them back up a couple more times. And then on Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So Megan, tell me, I you, you do a combination of things and uh, obviously by your or, uh, your resume. What is it that you gravitate more towards? What is it that excites you more about all of the various things? I know you paint, you dance, you do all those things, but what, what is it or that stands out the most? Uh -huh, I think it's the, the, the creative collaborative process and then that, that moment of um, creating where something is being transformed just right there in the moment. You know, and especially with collaborators, you know, I love my individual, my solo work, um, you know, painting and, you know, journaling, writing, all of that type of stuff. But what really sets me on fire is having a moment of bringing people together or creating in community and that type of uh, connection and communication. Mm -hmm. So obviously we interview a lot of artists on here, but from the podcast they're, they're, they're in art, but visual arts, but obviously art it takes on many forms. And uh, it's really nice that you have that combination. Um, so tell me when you do paint, what's your, what's the medium you normally use? What's your, what's your favorite medium? Yeah, currently I use a lot of acrylic, watercolor, um, and then mixed media, collaging things on. A lot of times my process is putting marks down or putting some texture down and moving the, the page around to kind of discover what is coming through. So some of the stuff and some of the images that I think you might have, 
these paintings, I don't know, some of them I started maybe 2013 and finished this year. So uh, a lot of my work in that sense, when it's drawing, painting, art on canvas, it's that relationship too to the, the, the canvas and the object that just keeps changing over time, you know? Sometimes it goes into a closet for a while, then it comes yeah. back out and then the conversation continues. Uh-huh. We have a comment coming in here. Let's check out one of the comments here. We have from Sanji Gilliam, D, by Ben and Humble. What? I'm not sure what that is. Mm. But how you doing this morning, Sanji? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Now, what... Uh, um. I like to ask all the artists as well. Like, what's your um your favorite artist or time of the day to create? Does it fluctuate or? I'm having a hard time hearing a little bit because I think it's the mic is very specific about the range of motion. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. when I move back, can you hear me better now? That's great. Yes. See, you know what? And I got to keep remembering to keep my mouth up on this mic like this. And mm -hmm. uh, I step back like this, you barely hear it. Yes, yes. Sorry mm -hmm. about that, but um. So I didn't want to get so far screen like that. <laughs> so what is your favorite uh, time of the day to create? Is, that, is there any particular time? Yeah, I'm I'm not a morning person. I would say the crossover points, you know, so, which might include sunrise, but uh, I don't catch a sunrise too often. So it's like that feeling, I say like 7 p.m. That's when like the lights go on for me, you know, uh -huh. and something starts like percolating and so night yeah and into the night mm -hmm. yeah i'm a late i'm a late night painter myself yeah so but sometimes i find myself painting all night and end up waking up in the like in, in the sun is coming up and i'm still there painting mm -hmm. um, love back to you i hope i'm pronouncing it right as these i hope i'm pronouncing it right and then we have tan these on to you as well that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Um, as far as inspiration, like, um, is there any artist or any particular person in your life that's inspired you um, along your artistic journey? Have you always been a child? Like, tell me a little bit about your introductory into art, like, kind of growing up. Like, what mm -hmm. was it like? How did you get introduced to art? Yeah, I think growing up i just saw a very like up close handmade life you know my parents my grandparents the house i lived in growing up you know my parents got it they were young early 20s something and just to see the um you know deconstruction and live through the reconstruction of that home my mom gets a design idea a painting idea and it's made from scratch, you know? And same with um, my grandparents. I'm just looking around. I have like, I'm sitting on a quilt that my mom had made wow. to the side, you know, my great grandmother uh, or a great aunt's like stitching is here. So just that thing of creating what is needed, creating something beautiful, uh, expressing in that way um, through, the, through the hands. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you, it does matter to a, a, a large degree. Like, I know a lot of the creativity I had came from, like, things my father wasn't an artist, but just the things he did, like, carpentry wise. That yeah, 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 yeah. Inspiring as well. Um, so, like, when, when did you kind of make the, that transition from, like, just actually doing visual kind of work into, like, performance art? Mm hmm. And, and she is doing a great job, by the way. We have a comment here. Doing a great job. <laughs> I think they want to talk to you, so you better talk back to them. There's a yeah, comment. Yeah, thank you, Aziz. Um, the performance art piece, I think it came after art school. Because in art school, you know, you have... Um, 
the whole room, people are coming in, painting together, you know, working together, discussing. Um, and then after that, I stayed, uh, you know, Rutgers, Mason Gross is in New Brunswick. I stayed in New Brunswick and had a close circle of friends. And it became about like, what do we just want to make? So we would just come up with these like themes, ideas, scripts, questions that we could explore by creating performance. So um, that involved like a lot of character development. I don't know if you'll like show a lot of what I gave you actually kind of goes back to that origin story. So yeah. some of the work like I said, is like paintings that maybe started way back until now. But when it comes to like the videos and things like that, that gets more to that origin story of, okay, like I'm here for the art, I'm here for that expression. But what does that mean to be seen? What does that mean to be in collaboration? And so that's where the performance piece started coming into it because it is almost like solving puzzles or riddles um, by getting into character and just seeing where the narrative goes. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a short clip and I think this one, it's, I don't know if it's called Jesso's short. Uh, oh, short. yeah. Yeah, so let me show that video for you um, uh, so we can, is this somewhat what you're talking about, what I'm about to show? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Wow, that was pretty cool. Like, that was awesome. I, I, I looked at it before and I, I put on the clips to make sure I had got it into the, the system. But I really like took a really, really good like. So if you explain kind of what what was the the concept and everything for that there. Mm -hmm. So that was actually three. Um, each of those clips are from three different pieces across time. So that first one with the green strips and I have myself rotated in both ways. Um, we were starting to play with me and my friend uh, Saguna Sridhar. She is on the camera with that. Um, we we're starting to play and develop this character and it's called the first one, Dress Rehearsal for Consequences. So <clears throat> there's a sculpture um, piece also that relates to this. I don't know if you have that one. It's like a jackal for a howling shadow, it's called. It's a mask of a, of a dog. Um, but there's a character in that mask as well that first originates back here with that that white paint. And I was painting myself with straight up gesso. I'm a painter, right? And it's like, what does it look like if I become the canvas? And what does that mean to be seen? And I found myself feeling very freed by having my body totally covered in white and just making those movements and being in process of, okay, how am I revealing myself? What does it feel like to be on camera? And then that um, character started playing out into the two other pieces that were in those video clips. Um, and one um, where it's kind of like a VHS tape is a part of it. Um, within that it was kind of uh exploring memory and how can we like externalize uh the idea of um recalling memories what we know and having faith in that stepping out process it was inspired by a poem called um i am the doubter and the doubt i'm forgetting the poet 
right now. Um, but this idea of how to hold those two ends. And I know a part of that poem, it says shadow and sunlight are the same. Um, so delving into and connecting with, and I think in my bio, it says something traveling the way of the wound, right? Yeah. Um, so as a therapist, um, you know, a lot of the work is in that juicy place of, you know, sometimes we, touch a wound and it's like, I want to jump. I want to get out of here. And I mean, I, I can totally relate to that. Am I still present? Um, and so I feel like the white paint has something to do that with that too. Am I fully present? Am I breathing? Right. Am I, you know, there's no color in the body of being in this process of performance to be able to make contact with those really meaningful places where maybe a wound happens and be able to stay with that feeling and not jumping up and out of the body, but really finding gold there in that sense of, yeah, shadow and, and sunlight are the same as our teachers. Mm -hmm. And you, you add that aspect in there of, like I said, the art therapy and the healing and the performance art and you also include like the dance and I think this clip I think this is you right here like this is in one of the dance studios uh where you uh tell me a little bit about what happens at your uh dance uh, uh, uh events if you want if you call them that you know make sure I'm saying it correct. yeah that's perfect um so as I was getting further into my um, internship training as around 2013, um, I had heard about this practice actually through Tom York of Radiohead in the Lotus Flower video. I saw him dancing and moving and this type of dance that was so, you know, like intuitive. And it's like, is that choreographed or is it spontaneous? And I, I looked it up and he said he'd been dancing the five rhythms in London uh, as a personal meditation practice and i have been on a journey of what is my practice going to be in uh in terms of um i can have a lot of energy and a lot of spark and a lot of you know party in me to be frank like i love to dance and like it like that that late night energy um but it was like how to um be with that and sustain with that and i had a supervisor uh, at the time in my clinical work to let me know, you know, when you're sitting here and you're listening to, um, you know, a client, all of this stuff is going to be arising in you as well. So it becomes this skill of double tracking, you know, what is being stirred up in me listening to these stories. And, and she was like really indicating like a mindfulness and a spiritual practice. So that's when I jumped in 2013 and I started, um, you know, dancing as often as possible and learning about um, Gabrielle Ross five rhythms map and eventually, and the, the training path for that, it truly is a path. You know, it could take as long or short to meet those requirements and go through the training. But 10 years later, um, I came out on the other side and, and leading that practice. And what it is, um, is a class and a, a really well-held space and container. There's no guided instruction, but there's so, so many clues and what I've really appreciated about the dancing path is that um, it's in that apprenticeship way, like being an apprentice to the dance. So, so much of the learning isn't, you know, here's step one, two, and three. It's no dancing thousands and thousands of hours to start to get in to, you know, um, the bones, the muscle, the deeper layers, things like way beyond what the mind is thinking to gather up all this, this information. And that really like, I mean, enlivened, it talked about that, like whited out gessoed figure looking for, that was looking for contact. Can I be seen in some of that performance stuff through the dance? And I went through a period of not painting so much anymore either because the art, it was like how to make something outside of myself, you know, at that point it was really just transforming and happening on the inside and what happens in in the five rhythms practice that i lead and um participate in there's no recording in there 
What was that again? That last part you said? There's no recording in there. You know, it truly is life as sacred art. So if you're in the room, you're in the room. Yes. And and we're in that container and we're moving that energy, you know, individually, but also with partner, with the group. Um, and it's set up to kind of, it goes in a wave form. That's the map. So we begin in flowing, getting grounded, staccato, starting to come out, come connected, get clear, expressive. Um, so I'm kind of going through the rhythms here. Uh, the third rhythm, the wave builds, right? So maybe we're starting out at 70 beats per minute. Maybe there's a tabla drum, that really round sounding drum that gets you flowing and continuously moving through the room to you know getting a little bit more funky and then a high peaking beat of just shaking it all out and really you know now all of the um a lot of the, the studies are pointing towards how physical you know healing really needs to be and that shake out point um for example like you know you see a lot of our responses they're so physical to life so the example of a bunny rabbit is coming to mind especially with that first character that we saw the whited out where yeah. it's kind of like what do you call that deer in the headlights yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Absolutely. laughs> right so you know deer in the headlights that reaction it's like the bunny in the grass that just freezes when it sees you open the door because that can save its life. But you know what they do once they run off to freedom? Uh, they get in their little burrow and they, blah, blah, blah. all animals do it. They shake it off. Uh -huh. um, wow. So that peaking point, it really gives an opportunity in the dance to shake it all the way through. And then we're getting into the fourth rhythm, which is lyrical, very light and starting to find new patterns. So it's an incredible journey in that way. And then in the fifth rhythm, the movement, is really the body part we're following is the breath and coming into this place of uh really purely witnessing and being with so i don't know if my hand is on screen but it's almost like i'm not guiding my hand as much as breathing into what it is doing to understand mm -hmm. and be curious mm -hmm. awesome now you with with the dance and, and you also are an art therapist so for those people that don't know what art therapy is can you explain that to them what's what's an art therapist and what you know normally do you do for a course of that mm -hmm. um so art therapy is um yeah, a licensed profession in the state of new jersey just as of the past couple years it's been around nationally since the 60s and if we're really talking about healing forever like that is the medicine that is the root if we look back at all cultures across time singing dancing making art um art's a way of knowing it's a healing process um in order i don't know if you're asking about like the educational path or what is our well, just, a, just a general idea for uh you know someone that does that because sometimes people say art therapy they, like, like people think that it's just painting something it's not it's it's all forms of art that you use in the therapy not just people sitting there and drawing stick figures and stuff like that it's more in depth than that and so mm -hmm. yeah um so, it, and it's an interesting career to, to be in, and it's really a fulfilling career because you're helping a lot of people, um, you know, with what you're doing and mm -hmm. doing it through the arts, which is, is awesome. So, and yeah, uh, I'm so grateful. One, like, it's a, I know it must be a great feeling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't know it was a thing, you know, I just kind of discovered it along the way of like how to live and what are the options to, you know, like be of service in this way of, what just seems to be real and true. What um, that looked like for me was I, I got a BFA. So you need you need to like a, all content areas of different mediums to apply to art therapy school. So you don't necessarily have to have a full degree in art, but mm -hmm. like I had to go back and do some ceramics work because as a painting major, I hadn't covered that area. Exactly. And um, we really study the language uh, and the physicality of the different art forms and what yes. they can, what moves through them. 
um, and how they can upregulate and downregulate within a therapeutic session, depending on the content that is coming forward. So I would say, and okay, so so you got to have that a lot of hands-on experience with materials. One of the favorite classes that I took in all of grad school is called the Psychology of Art Materials, and um, I think there's some images that we have that come from that course. Um, okay. So as therapists and within our therapy, I'm so grateful for the fact that we get our very own um, creative process and the training too, right? So it's like, I wouldn't go do something to somebody else that I haven't done myself. Um, but in a session, because we have that experience um, in making the art ourselves and the psychology of art materials, and then it's like a 63 credit graduate training um, masters for art therapy and very closely supervised throughout so when i looked into different jobs because i went and looked at internships at fashion you know am i going to go into a more studio approach in creating and selling art but when i did a little bit of work in the helping professions um i i do helping professions in quotes because that was even hard for me to say at the beginning because it's like how can i help somebody else right <laughs> You know, and I still feel that way. Is it helping or is it like, you know, we're just being with this together and mm -hmm. creating a space that we can be more embodied with whatever feeling is there and having that therapist and that connection point supports that helping, you know, I don't know. But, um, you know, being in support, being in contact, you know, expanding capacity with a, you know, an ally maybe more so. Um, I lost my thread a little bit here, but oh, right. So the psychology of art materials. So as we're working together around the table or maybe we're doing a little movement in the room, I'm tracking, it could be an open studio, um, you know, depending on how free that person is and what age too, right? You know, you got your eight year olds and then you got your 68 year olds and what stories do they have about, can they move around the room? Can they grab stuff? Do they want to just get the clay, get the pipe cleaners, get the pencils, get the, the paint, but simple example, you're drawing in pencil, you have so much control, right? So that can go either way. You know, maybe somebody is going for the pencil all the time because they need that control. And that is totally wonderful and fine and great. Mm -hmm. right? But what does it look if we start to get into a little bit of an oil pastel? Is that taking it too far? Because now the uh, colors are going to start to blend and you can't take back what you put down. And then uh, what does that look like if we get into paint? Well, paint is just can be totally fluid, you know? Uh, and so mm -hmm. if... And especially in the case of a, ch a child or even, uh, you know, adults at times, if we got all this loose paint blowing, it can bring out, you know, that fluidity of emotion and a lot of feeling. So as an art therapist, we're always um, like observing what's happening in the interaction with the materials. And then they call it being the third hand. So it's kind of like, huh. You know, do we need a little bit more structure here? Should we do a collage and have that more concrete form? Or is this something we want to explode out? And we're going to just put a big piece of paper on the wall and scribble with both hands and see how that energy moves, you know? So it's working within that continuum um, is a big part of the art process. They call it the expressive arts therapies continuum. Awesome. Well, listen, we are on here for art, so we want to take a look at some of your artwork. Um, mm -hmm. But I did pull this up. Maybe I remember you, you were saying something about uh, this right here. The jackal thing. The jackal. jackal for a howling shadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I can't even tell you where this is right now. It's a church in Philly under the L train. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some other pictures of this mask in the back so yeah yeah so what you were looking at in that first picture came after i had this mask on hand and i had a friend coming in it was right after hurricane mm, super storm sandy i was living down the the shore and i don't there was a just a call out for performances so we worked with um taking that mask and pulling it into a narrative about 
Um, I remember there was a quote we were working with. Sometimes people do not act because they're afraid they have no power. And we thought it was kind of funny too, because we didn't have any power. <laughs> All the power was out on the East Coast, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh creating this performance, but also this mask has that piece. And I don't know, there might be one that looks like a triangle. So here you can see like, this is big enough to fit over my whole body. The inside is made out of, there you go. The inside of the jackal's head is- this is the mask here, right? Yeah, yeah. Is made out of basically like bunched up paper that then mm -hmm. gets taped all around and then sewn on the outside, that's black burlap um that i sewed around it and if you put glue into a and water and mix it you can kind of shape it and it becomes like a hard shell so that's how these like teeth look sharp and they actually they are hardened like those burlap fibers but you can see here in the mouth of the jackal is that same little character almost see the white mm -hmm. yeah i see it, it looks yeah. like i see it's like shell. a little face from it inside there yeah so this is how the art sort of starts to keep giving, right? Because those performances of me painted and gesso all white came before this. And then this came later. And really the focus of this piece, like that tiny little white face is, you know, this big, it's little. So the focus of the piece was that much bigger jackal. Um, but then when I went to paint in the... Uh, mouth. I was doing reading at the time. Um, it was a book by Margaret Nomberg. She's one of the grandmothers of art therapy. I think she wrote it back in the 60s, talking about how the eye um, shape relates to seeing, giving, taking, perceiving. Also a little bit of like, you know, looking out, you know, am I safe? What's going on? Um, and I just, I, I saw that in the mouth of this dog. <laughs> and then within that, it was like this little creature was coming out of that eye within the mouth. Um, yeah. And then <laughs> years later, after this mask was made, I was dancing and the image of the mask came to me i don't know i was just moving with it i think the song maybe had something to do with there were um like a dog or something a theme like that was in it and all of this started clicking so this is what i say when like the the sacredness of the art like you might not know and i still might not it just keeps like being on that becoming and that unknown edge but in that dance um I had this memory of being a kid. I lived um, in a small little town. The church was across the street. I think I was maybe in the first grade and I had left vacation Bible school and I'm waiting. I grew up on route 130, but where it's just like a trickle, not much to it down in South Jersey. And my, I was waiting for my brother to pick me up after vacation Bible school to cross the street. I wasn't supposed to cross the street by myself because I was like five. This dog was barking. We had this neighbor's dog. And I just remember feeling so scared and like, where are my people? And I just walked away. I knew a kid, I saw him playing in his yard up the block. And then it was, where's Megan? Everybody's tearing up the neighborhood, you know, went missing as a little girl. But um, in the dance, I came back around to understand even more deeply you know meeting that feeling in that place of am i seen am i cared for and also that element of the dog like this pack animal you know and wanting to be connected um so all of those pieces um kind of follow that that thread that body of work so we have another piece here I've got a few more of yours I'm going to show. So give me a, you know, tell me a little bit about this one. And um, did you have a couple that are similar in style? I think we have this one here as well. Kind of a similar style painting. There's mm -hmm. three of them here. So tell me a little bit about this and how did you come about this style of painting? What was your inspiration? Um, and are these all related or are they just completely separate? 
Um, this one is earlier. It's much more collage. This is on like a thick paper. So it's got some loose brush strokes and some collage on there, but you can see there's like kind of like this, like aggressive male type of figure. Then there's uh, the cross collage on there. And there's like uh, a hand that looks like it could be swinging. And down in the corner, I don't know if you see, it's kind of like Mm, like a turtle shell or maybe a soccer ball with mm -hmm. a foot kicking so yeah a, uh, and with the blue so for me it's telling this story of traveling into the depths and how do we get there you know is it a fight is it there's also a mirror that circle is a mirror um mm -hmm. on the uh top right. and right. then there's the astronaut <laughs> in uh chalk on that last piece too so this one right here the last one that you just had up another element in there was uh oh you're going oh you're talking about the one we were actually talking about right here yeah there's i don't know if you can see that black and white is a quick like yeah, a i see it i see it sketch. yes yeah 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 mm -hmm. so it's like when everything is coming at you you know do you go to the depths do you space out do you do you fight it um so yeah that's a little bit about that one and uh yeah, this one right here this is a pretty cool piece right here i like this i like the, the energy with it uh tell me a little bit about this one. this is a quick one mm -hmm. um i think right i just did some stretching and pulled out some color um moved it around on the canvas and that's a lot of times the way that i work and then what do i what do i see just coming through the strokes that are there and developing it um and yeah a lot of my um work is informed by like the movement and the dance so a lot of like physical figures will come through um, and this one is just that sense of kind of, you can see like the weighted and the solidity of legs. Yeah. Thank goodness for legs and being grounded, you know, <laughs> but the top is kind of like, I call this one carrying something. It's just like, how am I managing this? How am I carrying it? But there's that solidity and that, I don't know. I feel like there's like a calmness in the face, but also maybe a little bit of sadness and also a little bit of like determination uh, of, you know, mm -hmm. carrying something. And we have this piece right here. I really like this too. Yeah, I feel like this one was kind of like a turning point. I started playing more and more with my process and discovering there was a point and like a lot of what I sent you, like you said, it has like a similar style. But there's other stuff that I did. And this comes through a turning point where I was like, oh, the art is starting to get beautiful. Like, I, <laughs> there was a long time where I'm like, am I going to keep making this scary, like crazy? Like, what is going on? Stuff like, I like it, you know? And uh, But it was like, wow, you know? And I feel like this was around a turning point where I started to discover like a different way in somehow of how I was applying color and the figure and like beauty starting to come with it. So this one I call a, a fetal rainbow. Um, and this will happen in the dance where it's like that permission. Sometimes you just want to curl up in a ball, you know, and to just have that space of rolling around on the floor and breathing fully in. And I think I, you know, I added the flower on the side, just like signifying that beauty. And I'll work through like with color uh, a lot of times, sometimes my method will be just go through the rainbow and see, you know, where it lands on the page to play with every color. So yeah, this is fetal rainbow. It's kind of curling into that. And you can see the nostril. I don't know if you noticed that just breathing. Mm -hmm. This is a really cool piece. I really like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Nice colors, the color goes they are really nice i like the composition it's all really nice do you sell prints of your artwork or you just sell only original i have i don't think ever sold art oh like you're a, a you're one of the art. artists that i've seen your art I like all that and you just you just do it to do it and you're more mm -hmm. into the art therapy dance side of it. 
right i'm so grateful for that because i can be an artist and i almost i'm i'm trying to you know i turned 40 this year um so i'm kind of um i've been I'm, i feel very fortunate and grateful to have found this path where i can be a artist and it's not about the output you know whatever i'm doing it's that similar exploration so i can kind of just like i take 10 years on a painting mm -hmm. um so let's look at one of your another one of your videos we have here um so hold on a second oh yeah this is a sketch some sketchbook so you ask when do i make art this is me like 7 p.m and beyond um this is really cool that's a short little video of showing uh the different uh, some of the pieces from her sketchbook um when we get done with that i'm going to move into um, we're going to take a look at one more image and uh, you can tell me about that. And then we're coming shortly to her. And I want to put your information back up for the follow. And uh, we have a couple more questions for you. There we go. Okay. And I want to show this piece right here. Tell me a little bit about this. Hmm. <laughs> this was one of this was my favorite one that you sent. This was oh, one you? Yeah. what did you what what was it? Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's like you it's so many things you can have on there. Like I'm gonna iron things out, you know. It's like <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like so many things that the first thing I looked at it felt like, you know what, I'm gonna really iron things out. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna look to the heavens for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call this is um, a image that I shot for a performance that I did uh, at Master Space. I was an artist in residence there a couple of years back uh -huh. called Iron Glove. And I have been playing with this idea of this iron. This is an iron from the 1800s um, for a while. And it also ties back into this earlier performance pieces as well. Um, you know, you asked like if, if I sold any art, but then we also talked about like being in the helping profession. Um, and one of those older performances, it was called um, the missionaries and cannibals problem, which is a classic logic problem about, you know, there's this many missionaries and this many cannibals on this side of the river. Um, if you get too many of the cannibals with the missionaries and the boat crossing the river, they'll eat them, right? And figuring out that logic problem. But we figured it out through art and painting ourselves and doing this wow. whole performance and taking it into the gallery and playing around with that. Wow. Um, and then this piece was inspired by this. I'm always curious about missionary values, you know, especially as a, a white lady, right? I what does it mean to again this thing of helping and putting things out into the world and so a part of this performance was uh one of my grandma's church bulletins um she would use them i have this big um collection of fabric from her so every once in a while you go through the fabric and you find like a little pattern that she had cut out to you know turn it into pot holders or something for her that she was sewing and there was a heart cut out in this um bundle of fabric and on the heart was all this writing about missionaries going to different corners of the world and supporting them um and so i was playing with that in this performance as well and the sense of getting off of the clock so what does it mean because we're always you know in our culture like how do we make money? <laughs> that was another part of one uh, of those other performances as well. Um, investigating, you know, what is the work? What is the work that we're doing in the world and getting off of somebody else's clock and mm -hmm. uh, um, domestic space sometimes becomes neglected because <laughs> there's plenty of work to be done at home. <laughs> 
um, just to take care of ourselves and our families and one another and our loved ones and our community. Um, that, okay, we got to like make this money. We got to do this thing. We got to be pro productive in this certain way. Um, and in this performance, it was about, well, what does it mean to be able to make peace with that, um, domesticity, that domestic life of like fighting back with this iron, you know, um, and getting burnt by this iron of how, you know, how much conflict can get stirred up in the domestic space because of all the stress that is placed on, you know, small family units that we often live in now, you know, or, you know, maybe collection one, two, three, four, five people, but as humans, we need like a broader spread than that, right? So that performance um, was really playing with that idea of um, what are these almost missionary values and worker values of trying to put something out there on something else. But what does it look like to live and be in the day to day? Just coming back to like the sacredness of that and getting off of the clock. So iron to the sky. Mm -hmm. awesome. awesome. The um so as we start to wind down, um again I'm gonna show for information. I wanna make sure that people uh, know where to contact you. I'm gonna put it up one more time for everyone. If you would like to here's your website, lifeformpractices.com. This will be rebroadcast, by the way, everyone on my YouTube channel, KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast. So you will be able to see the uh, rebroadcast of this episode. Also uh, on Instagram, Five Rhythms with Megan Kelly, and then at Life Form Practices. And then we also have on Facebook at Five Rhythms Philly, and then at Life Form Practices with Megan Kelly. Um, usually at the end of every episode, we have a couple of things to do. And one is, uh, what advice would you have for an up and coming young artist? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to say, what say I don't, and you could actually say, I don't have none. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say that's great. You know, that's great. And you can, wherever somebody at, that's their starting point, right? So whatever I have to say would be jumping into this or that or something, you know, that I'm imagining for them. But it's, again, it's like that unraveling process of being an artist. So, um, and maybe this is me talking to my younger self a little bit, but, you know, you can get away with a lot more than you, than you think. So do the thing that's a good one, that's a good one. <laughs> and, and it kind of brings me right here and then we have our quote our uh a quote from either a famous an infamous or a known or unknown artist uh, so our quote for today is to paint is the most terrific thing that there is but to do it well is very difficult read a gala and uh that's a quote for our, our artist quote for today you know so again i want to say Stay around for some housekeeping on my end, but I want to say thank you for joining us today on the KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast. Uh, we extend our gratitude to our special guest, Megan uh, Kelly, and uh, we're so happy that you decided and, you know, accepted coming on uh, for this interview and, uh, you know, much love. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny, for having me. It's so much fun. Uh, uh, Great talking. Uh, all right, good talking to you. You guys stay on, I got a couple of things for you. Okay, and uh, so let us get over to, a, a, that was a really nice uh, interview with Megan. Um, art therapy, the, you know, you, there's so many things you can do in the world of art. You just, you don't have to just do one uh, particular thing. Hold on, let me get this uh, comment off here. So there's just a variety of things you can do, as you've seen with uh, some of the uh, 
uh, artists um, that I bought on here, a variety of them just don't, um, just aren't artists, visual artists, they're performing artists, sculptors, sculptors, etc. So there's, I'm, I'm not just going to bring you visual artists. I'm going to bring you artists that, um, I would say, uh, artists that are pretty versatile. Let me put it that way. Um, so let's look here. I'm sorry, I'm fumbling through here. One of the things I'm going to be doing, I've been doing most of my podcasts. I've been doing them uh, myself, I'm moderating, reading messages and things like that. Um, but shortly, I will have a moderator um, continue to work on the channel and uh, develop it. And eventually, we will have a, uh, a steady moderator. So I won't have to be looking down at the table. Hey, and you can follow me like the social media uh you have our podcast page ajlr so you're on youtube on facebook uh, this right here is my instagram channel or page rather at kjl artists and this is the youtube channel kjl art sanctuary podcast and then we also have what's called Art with Kenneth Podcast. Let me tell you a little bit about that. The Art with Kenneth Podcast offers a captivating exploration of the creative process as experienced by uh, myself for engaging discussions and insightful narratives. The podcast provides a unique window, window into the artistic journey from the initial spark of inspiration to the final realization of a masterpiece. Um, listeners, you are invited to delve into the motivations, influences, and challenges uh, that shaped uh, my work, gaining valuable insight into my artistic vision and process. And it gives me the opportunity to showcase um, like the first range of creative processes. Um, it also celebrates the richness and complexity of, of my expression, often offering a deeper understanding of my styles, techniques, and inspiration. Um, whether you're an aspiring artist seeking inspiration or you're just an art enthusiast looking to gain insight into the mind of uh, my creations, my podcast will provide for you a rich uh, tapestry of narratives that will illuminate the beauty and intricacies of my journey. Also on the Art with Kenneth podcast, I offer art history uh, where we delve into the lives of uh, and works of artists from the past and present to uh, engaging narrative, activating documentary footage, and photos. We bring to light the stories of both celebrated and lesser known artists from renowned to the controversial. We invite you to join us on a journey to the diverse and fascinating history of art and its creator. In addition, uh, my podcast channel also offers a uh, museum, gallery, and artistic uh, studio tours, um, allowing you to experience firsthand an art artist in their studio, as well as live museum and gallery tours. So again, I want to say thank you for uh, coming, and if you would like to support our channel, you can support us via Square, Venmo, Or cash app. And remember, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the notification bell. Um, and you can use the QR code, uh, which will be uh, attached to the broadcast if you would like to donate. And your support is invaluable to our channel. And we appreciate the very support. Uh, next Sunday, we, we had a uh, we had two Sundays off where we weren't uh, broadcasting the last couple of weeks. The one was because of uh, uh, Christmas, and the other was um, I was I had the flu, and so I had to cancel uh, last episode. But uh, here we are back again, and you know we continue every Sunday at 11 a.m. on uh, artist interview. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Much love.